Hi, I'm Hank and this is Plus Econ. Today we're going to discuss unemployment and employment rates, why politicians and newspapers sometimes use one over the other, and how these numbers are found and what their flaws are. The unemployment rate comes from a survey of about 60,000 households. In the survey, participants are asked whether they are employed or not. If they answer yes, they're considered employed. If participants reply that they are not employed, they're asked whether they've looked for work in the last four weeks or not. If they have not, they're considered to not be in the labor force. But if they have, they're considered unemployed. So the statistic is really made up of three components. The employed, the unemployed, and those not in the labor force. We can immediately see that there's a flaw in the way the unemployment rate is found. Say you've been looking for a job for four months and you decide to take a five week break because you don't believe there are any jobs out there. If you're a survey participant, you answer no when asked if you've looked for a job in the last four weeks, meaning you are not participating in the labor force. You are thus not counted unemployed and the unemployment rate is lowered. We can infer from this that the unemployment rate is always higher than the statistic produced by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. We can't say exactly how much though because our survey is very simple and has been that way for a long time. So in review, there are three types of people that the unemployment survey finds. Employed, people who have a job. Unemployed, people who do not have a job and have looked for a job in the last four weeks and not in the labor force. These are people who have not looked for a job in the last four weeks and do not have a job. There's one kind of person we've left out though, the underemployed. The survey asks no questions to determine whether you're happy with the amount of employment you have or whether it's enough to support you and your household. So really we have employed, unemployed, not in the labor force, and underemployed. So the flaws with the unemployment rate are that it underestimates the number of unemployed and does not reflect the number of underemployed. You probably hear statistics on job creation, how many jobs were created over a certain period of time. This number comes from the establishment survey, a completely different survey from where we find unemployment rates. This survey is of about 160,000 businesses. The change in the number of people on the payroll is the number of jobs created or lost. You may have already found the flaw in this survey. It doesn't count those who are self-employed. The unemployment rate and the job creation number can be very different. You might expect these numbers to be the same, and they're often very close, but they're not. Like we've pointed out, they have different flaws, and so they produce different numbers. A particularly large difference occurred in the early 2000s. From November 2001 to August 2003, the establishment survey, the one that produces job statistics, showed a loss of 1 million jobs. While on the other hand, the household survey showed job growth of 1.4 million jobs. The establishment survey couldn't take into account all the people who became self-employed because they don't show up on anyone's payroll. That the household survey counts an employed person, no matter how many jobs they're working at, as one employee while the establishment survey will count that person again for each job that they have. A person working two or three jobs counts as two or three people working in the economy. You can see how this could lead to large differences. This is why politicians and newspapers will cite the different statistics. It depends on their bias and their view. If you're in a recession and you're trying to make yourself sound good as a politician, you might report that there were 100,000 jobs created. If you're a politician and you're trying to show that the current incumbent is doing a bad job, you might report the unemployment rate. The lesson in this is to be a little cautious and skeptical about economic statistics. While these statistics are very useful, they can be abused. Thanks for watching this episode of Plus Econ. Please leave your ideas and comments down below and read more in the description. I hope you'll subscribe and join us next time, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.